So I've been a broadcast colorist for many years now and I get to work with some fantastic footage, but every now and again, you'll get a shot that looks something like this and you have to fix it. This might be a really important interview piece that I have to just save somehow. So I'm not expecting it to look fantastic, but I certainly want it to look a lot more usable than it is now. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. It's a tool that has been in DaVinci Resolve for, well, I've been using Resolve for 13 years now, and it's always been there. It's not one of the new cool features that use the neural engine or anything like that. It's a good old basic primary RGB mixer. Now this is available in the free version, so you don't need the studio version for it either and it seems quite undocumented. So I just wanna show you exactly how I use it to correct shots that look like this. So to start with, I've got a good clean image. So I'm just gonna explain how the RGB mixer works. And you'll find the RGB mixer down in the bottom here, and you've got your primaries, you've got your HDR tools, and then next to that, you've got your RGB mixer. Just to show you my color management, I've already color managed this shot. So it's going from ARRI to RIC 709 color space, and I've got in here, I've got my color management settings to set to auto. So it's DaVinci YRGB color managed, automatic color management. I've just taken the absolute default. Normally I work with a CST workflow, but that is very well documented on my channel. So go and have a look at some of those episodes if you wanna see more detailed. But this is purely to show you how the RGB mixer works. All right, so what's going on here? I've got my vector scope up. This is the main tool we want to be looking at with the RGB mixer, all right? And you can see this has got a nice even spread all the way around the vector scope, showing us that our shot is pretty well balanced and it has a good level of saturation in it. So the RGB mixer is splitting our channels into three. You've got your red channel, your green channel, and your blue channel. And with a value of one of red, green a value of one, and the blue channels blue set to one means nothing is being affected. So one equals 100% regular video feed going through, all right? If I start playing with these numbers, then things start happening. So watch what happens if I increase them all to two. So we can go up to two, by the way, and we can come down to negative two. So I'm gonna push it up to two, two and two. And what we've effectively done there is double saturation. Okay, so we're not at one, we're now at two. So when all these values are equal, so the blue, the green, and the red channel in their perspective outputs, then we have not affected the color balance at all. We're just increasing or decreasing saturation. So let me show you what happens when I go to zero. So I'll type zero there and type zero there. I'm just doing this on my keypad and zero there we've effectively got a black and white image and you can also do that with the rgb mixer by pressing this monochrome button so this is a kind of documented feature on how to do cool black and white because when you press this the other channels disappear and you can now mess around with these different channels giving you very different black and white looks than just pressing saturation down to zero um, the values here are slightly different this is basically how our eyes see those different wavelengths coming in so don't worry if they look slightly out of balance uh, we, we are more perceptible to a green channel coming in than we are to a blue channel. So that's why they're slightly staggered. So I'm gonna take monochrome off. I'm gonna reset these back. And let me show you what's happening now. So if we take our, let's start with our red channel, okay? Watch what happens with the scope, okay? So red is sitting up here. And if I push my red channel only up, everything starts moving towards red. And if I bring it the other way, because we're not in monochrome, if I bring it the other way, it now goes to the opposite of red, which is cyan. All right, so you can see that moving there. So let me reset that. Same with the green. Everything starts pushing towards green and going in a negative direction. Everything's gonna to go towards magenta. And the same with the blue channel. So we're gonna go blue and then the opposite of that is yellow. And there we go. All right, so let me reset those. So now you kind of know what's going on. Let's have a look at our faulty shot and see how the RGB mix is gonna help us. So I'm just using my panel here just to go to my next shot. And first thing we need to do is analyze this on our scope. So on the vector scope, we can quite clearly see, and it's pretty visible looking at the shot anyway, that this is very yellow. So what we obviously need to do is push blue into this shot to negate that yellow cast. So again, just to reiterate, I'm not trying to make this look fantastic, I'm trying to make it look usable. All right, so let's straight away go to our blue channel, and if we push blue up, as we've already seen, this is all gonna start moving towards the blue side. So I'm gonna push it up as hard as I can, and we don't get very far because that yellow cast is so strong that I don't have an opportunity to bring it as far over as I want to. I'm just gonna reset that. I'm just gonna show you what would happen in the primaries if I did the same. I take my offset here, push away from yellow, and push towards blue, and I can indeed 
neutralize it a little bit, but we're getting this weird cast going on now. I'd have to start fixing and pulling all that around. The RGB mixer allows me to do this in a little bit of a cleaner fashion. All right, so I'm gonna reset that. I'm gonna go back to my RGB mixer. And what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna borrow from the other channels. So I've got a green and a red input here, and I can push the green and red video signal into the blue channel, which is gonna help us get this a little bit more neutral. So watch what happens, it's easy to show you. So I'm gonna press on the green channel and I'm gonna push up and I'm watching the scope here. And it's gonna start pushing it towards my green channel. Okay, and you can see already that has done a really nice job of just neutralizing this heavy color cast that we've got. And you can also see on the image it's looking much better already. So let's just see what happens if I put a little bit of red in there. Okay, and there we go. So we've really cleaned up that image. If I just press shift, D, I can switch that on and off. And that's done a great job already. Now what we can do is take these values where we've got one, one, and one, and if we increase them all by the same amount, we're just gonna add a little bit more natural saturation back into the shot, because this is looking very flat at the minute. So let's start off with, let's add uh, 1.25 maybe. So it's 25% saturation. In order to make that work, I need to do it on the red and green channels as well, otherwise it's not balanced. So that's 1.25. So all I'm doing is increasing the spread here, not the actual balance itself. Okay, so it's 1.25, 1.25, and 1.25. So we've got equal amounts of saturation in there. Just to check now, I'm gonna have a look at my green channel here in the blue. Remember, the reason we're using these channels is because I can't get enough out of this blue channel. I can't get it to go over enough. I'm just gonna reset that so it goes back to 1.25. And I'm just gonna check my green channels, good. I'm just looking at my vector scope. I'm not looking at the image at all. Let's just have a look at the red channel just to be sure. And somewhere around there. And that is looking much better. Now, it's certainly usable already. Just to finish it off, that's pretty much the RGB mixer. But just to finish this off, let's add another serial. And then what I'm going to do is go to my waveform. Because I want to have a look at the levels going on now. So let's go to our main primary color wheels. I'm going to use my offset tool just to lift up the exposure there. And let's get that. Obviously needs to be lifted quite a lot here. I'm just being careful of these highlights up here, which are clipping. So, and obviously with this shot, I'm not overly worried about that. And let's just bring this down. I'm doing this really quick. Obviously this episode is about the RGB mixer, but let's just try and finish it off and see what we can actually get out of this image. I'm gonna add another serial now. We wanna lighten their faces up for sure. So I'm gonna use my windows here. Let's do a power window. So I'd probably have a shape something like this with lots of soft edge on it because you don't want to see the window. And then I'm going to use my offset tool just to lift it up a little bit more, maybe a bit of gain in there, maybe a little bit of saturation as well. And in fact, they look a little bit soft as well. So I might even go to my blur tool here and just add negative blur, which is going to give us a sort of sharpen there. Something like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a parallel here. So I'm going to say option P and I'm just going to do a little bit more work on her face. Again, I'm just going to be really quick about this, but let's do, let's just take a window like this. And I think it's more about her sort of eye line here really. So let's just do that nice and soft again. And let's just give her a little bit of a boost there. I can't actually see what's going on. So to do that, if you click here and just click off, you can actually see what's going on. If I press Command and D, I can enable and disable that. So I think we still need a bit more of a boost. I'm gonna add another serial here, so option S. And let's have a look at what's happening with our temperature actually. Let's just pull that up a little bit. A little bit more gain maybe, just to give it a proper boost. And I think really the work here, this could do with a little bit of care. So I'm gonna add another serial here. I could use a curve, for example, but I might just go straight for the warper here, to be honest. I'm gonna grab the color warper. I'm gonna take a sample there and I'm just gonna increase the saturation. There we go. So we're getting some nice color contrast going on now. And let's make it nice and yellow. So that is looking much better. Let's shift D to switch it off and back on before and after. So I'm sure you'll agree that the RGB mixer really helped us out there. It got this shot usable. That's what I wanted it to do. Um, I hope that has enlightened you a little bit how the RGB mixer works. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.